ancient danger in front of turrets and hide behind my like turrets so that they would do damage to the uh, mechs, right? And the idea was that I was going to take less damage, I wasn't going to need as many people, and we were hopefully going to get through it with like less casualties and stuff, right? But then I realized when I was fucking brushing my teeth like fucking last night, I'm sure it was like last night, right? It occurred to me that I could probably do the same thing with the uh, defoliator ship that's landed. Except on the other side of my map. So basically like I won't be able to like pop open an edge of a building and like hide in that or like hide around the corner or whatever. Right? I can't do that because of like how it is and where it is and stuff, right? But um, my thoughts are maybe I can check if I've got turrets in that area and activate them. Because if I can, all I need to do then is use my EMP blasters, the three people that can actually stun the mechs. To kind of like wake them up, stun them, and then like force them towards the turrets. Of course, like most of my colony is like really pissed off at the moment because like so many people died. They're kind of like in like dealing with it, kind of in mourning, right? So I'm guessing I'm gonna still have to wait like a day or so to be able to deal with that, or like probably a couple of days in game. But um, yeah, that's essentially how I think I might be able to fix the problem. Whoa, shit is uh, kind of like stand back and let the turrets do some of the heavy lifting because they can't, the enemies that have landed can't do ranged attacks which means they still have to run past them. Like the turrets aren't going to do a lot of damage but if they could do some and then if I have gunners and stuff and animals we could probably take them out with like the least amount of casualties. No matter how I played through it, it looked like I was going to take a lot of like death, you know. And it's not that I don't want any colonists to die. I understand my colonists will die and I will inevitably like lose people and stuff. But I do feel like there had to be a way to do it where hopefully if I could avoid people dying, avoid creatures dying and stuff like that, but still get rid of it and like progress and survive kind of thing. And I think I figured out that that's the best way to do it. Because I couldn't, like I've tried it a few different ways. I actually worked out I spent two hours trying to like attack this uh, defoliator ship thing that landed. And I'm like, because I thought I only did it for about an hour, something like that. I normally like give difficult battles like about one and a half hours of my time if shit's like going south because I, I want to have like a solid crack at it you know I don't want to just like give up after like two rolls kind of thing but um I probably have to go back but yeah this was this was basically like I think I tried like four different ways the only way that I think is going to work is the way that I haven't tried yet so I'll try that Good day. I also hate kind of like wasting the extra time that I could be advancing my colony through battles. I don't really enjoy that, but then again, it is my playstyle, so I'm not really too bothered to be going back and stuff. It just takes me longer to get to my destination because I'm busy kind of like re-rolling an outcome to see if it could be better. You know, these look awesome. Attack rating, mana, stolen per hit, enhanced defense, fire resistant. Yeah, I like the fire resistant shit. Yeah, that looks pretty standard. That looks almost normal-ish. But uh, like this, it just looks a little too fancy. I know that these are like a lot stronger. I uh, I did a lot to get like decent gloves. And I think, is it my gloves that buff me? Uh, that gives me a little bit of dexterity. I think one of my things is either my helmet. Nothing like shoes or something. Actually, you know what? When I leveled, Right, my armor requiring required strength 70. I had something on me that required required dexterity is 110. Okay, so this thing still needs 110, so I'm still like 10 levels away from being able to fix that. To being like, oh, I don't have to worry if I've got the right armor on. Sorry, I had to stretch. I'm doing a lot of like stretching and yawning tonight. It's like I didn't get a lot of sleep and I didn't sleep super well 
So I also intend to sleep like straight after stream because I've got stuff planned for tomorrow that I need to be like up and about for. Um, so like I'm not trying to necessarily wake up or like stretch and like get super comfortable because I know that like I've got stuff to do after stream and then like I gotta go to bed kind of thing. Like you know when like, I don't know about you guys but I tend to wake up and like doing certain activities like for instance if I have a shower normally speaking like I feel refreshed but I never feel like, oh man that looks awesome I never feel like super exhausted tired straight after it or anything like, I've had times where I've felt like uh like weak exhausted afterwards like when I'm unwell and stuff obviously but like I never get like I'm super super sleepy tired straight after a shower because usually Usually a shower for me isn't like, I don't know, it's not like a relaxing situation, it's more like a cleaning process that's mandatory before I sleep sort of thing, so yeah, I don't know. I I don't like get super woken up by it, but I definitely find these days it feels like, it feels like it takes a lot of time. Like, not to like shower, I mean, it just feels like the whole process is a lot every day to like do the whole shower, wait for my hair to dry, go to sleep kind of thing. Usually by the time I'm, by the time my hair is kind of semi-dry and I'm trying to go to sleep, it's kind of like probably been at least an hour. My hair takes like 20 minutes to dry, give or take, depending on how well I towel dry it to begin with. I don't really use like blow dryers and stuff. I use them on like occasion or sometimes during winter when it's really fucking cold and I know it takes a lot longer for my hair to dry off and I don't want to be cold. But those are like the only real exceptions. I normally I normally like wash my hair every night too. And somebody's gonna be like, uh, you probably shouldn't do that. I'm like, you don't know my hair and my lifestyle. This is my choice to like wash it every night. You know, so it works for me, it's comfortable. And my hair's in pretty fucking nice condition anyway. I could only imagine if I didn't wash I it every overburdened. day. Like, I would probably need... I can't imagine like more of a like oil remover kind of base thing, but it would be more like... Um, I don't know. I don't know how to like say it, but I, I just imagine that it would be like... Yeah, I literally can't find words to fucking describe how I feel about, like, the potential of, like, how my hair would be different. I know it would be greasy. It would be greasy if I didn't wash it every day. So I have, like, a lot of, like, natural fucking oil production in my hair. Which is part of why I, like, wash it all the time. I know that, like, the idea is, like, if you wash it too frequently, it produces more oil. No. And when I was growing up, we were only allowed to uh, wash our hair like a couple times a week um, to like, you know, make products last and shit. And even then the products were watered down so they weren't like usually strong enough to strip the oils and stuff. So yeah, I had like relatively like greasy hair. Not like greasy, oily. I'd say oily because it wasn't like film greasy, it was just like it looked shiny. <laughs> it looked very shiny. But yeah. There was no benefit to it, I just found that it sat flat and was uncomfortable. So, it works up again, wagging your tail happily. What are you doing, Viking? What are you up to? You wagging your tail about. The stretchy paws wagging your tail happily, so you wolf flush. I find that you're a very stretchy, sleepy wolf lately. I feel like, um, I've got this whole area through here. I might just finish up in this little spot here. Um, I don't know. I feel like maybe it's the season, maybe you don't like frolic around as much at the moment. I know when it gets colder, I find that I think you're more active, maybe? Said Viking Tarbly. No. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just tend to find like the warmer it gets, the less I kind of it. Less I kind of expect to see like you like going for a run or like uh, having like wolves in the area and all sorts of I stuff, you know. I maybe probably can't. Uh, no, I can. I can carry stuff. You just gotta move a couple of things. We can take this all back. This is like a mess. It's like all lots of little bits and pieces. Unfortunately. 
I think I'm kind of strong enough for the area that I'm in. I'm not really, but it's okay. The other Stay thing too is one of my see. items is increased based on level, which I think is this. No, that one's just plain defense. I have something that increases, wouldn't be my helmet, I placed that recently. What is it that I have that increases its defense? Based on my level. Um, ain't none of that. Hmm. Oh, that one's a requirement, so 20% less. That would explain how I'm able to use a lot of shit. Uh, 31 based on character level. Okay, so... My shield being stronger... That could have gone up when I actually leveled. You know when I accidentally bought the other shield? There's a chance that they would have been on par with each other until I actually leveled. Maybe. Because, like, it'll go up based on my character level. Um. Hmm. I'm getting, like, a lot of bits and pieces. I wish I could, like, store more health. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to need too much to go up against. Well... Like, I will when I'm going through the um the ancients pass or whatever the ancients way. I'm gonna need it in there because I'll get poisoned frequently. I just want to see if I can ditch anything else from my inventory, my stash or whatever. I would like to hold more health than this. I've got a lot of health in here. I've got like a couple of rows worth of health and rejuvenations and stuff like that. Like the full rejuvenations. If I don't spam those, if I can actually control myself when I get them, they should be quite useful. Um, Serity, lightning resist. Uh, I might have did that. It's not going to help me much. Faster hit recovery. I ordered the other faster hit recovery. Fire damage. The one to two is just not that much. It's helped, don't get me wrong, all of these have been very helpful through what I've needed them for. Like, anything has helped, right? Just the smallest amount has been useful. Evening. But now we're getting into like, la like end of nightmare, early hell kind of territory. Like, I'm not that far into fucking nightmare yet, but I'm not that far, far away either. Like. If I could like clear out most of here, I feel like there's like three levels to this place. Is there anything else on the ground? No. Okay. It's like down here. I've already found the next way down and then, so there is like another level to this but I don't know how far down it goes. I don't know if there's like this amount of space on the next level down. I assume there is. But yeah, I've got this like corner area to clear out as well. Shit. Why is it all electrics? Give me the don't fear electricity shine. Thank you. I can see that and I'm like, there's a reason for this. I accidentally did knock back or like knock the flea on the one bastard that's like lightning enchanted. Oh no you don't. I saw that. This guy came running straight in here, 100% was gonna like kill me. We have to get rid of that. No, clear the decoy. Ah. That's actually gonna be interesting when I've got monster flea and I'm going through like Val's area. Also that's going to be annoying as fuck when I go through the cow area in hindsight. Well, foresight? I think it's foresight. I don't know. Because like, what the? I don't see that very often in like a clear space. I'm normally like crowded by things when that goes off. Um, yeah, the cow area, I have to kind of wait until we've done all of Nightmare before I can do you know, Nightmare's cow area, right? Um, and then we'll go down to like hell and stuff, but the the hell was that noise? The, the kind of way that like oh, the cow level is, the cows are kind of like they're strong. <coughs> Sorry, but it's mostly reliant on them being um, clustered up kind of thing, like as in like grouped up. Like swarms of cows, basically. I guess the real word would be herds of cows. Uh, obviously. 
but yeah, it, it's like an overload of like things attacking at once. It's the same principle of what I do in RimWorld, realistically, where I have like a lot of things attacking one thing at a time, and therefore it's impossible to like basically like kill them all while you're kind of like you know defending yourself. Anyway, the the idea is I probably probably could take on cow level at my current situation. I feel like I could, but but oh shit! By the time I'm ready to go into hell, I should be well and truly strong enough to be able to just run around and mow down like most of the cows and stuff without you know without being worried about potentially dying there. Because I think like the first time we went in there, I was like, once I like figured out how to get back, back in there, was um, like so underpowered for it. I had to like wait. I had to like wait until like I was able to do like the next area. Mind you, if I don't pick up everything, if I went down the cow level and I loaded myself up with some charms extra, right, and I just ran around and killed everything but didn't collect all the loot. Like it's gonna cost me a lot of like town portals back and forth again. But it'll be a lot faster, I think. Like, it's gonna take me about the exact same amount of time. It's just a lot less like stop starting with battles and shit. Which will be a bit easier. What I used to do in like after like the first time I experienced it. So it's kind of interesting too that progressively speaking as I'm playing through this, there's times when I remember more of how I would have done something by the time I was at that point in the game. And it fascinates me because, like, from my perspective, like, it feels a lot like I'm remembering as I play. And I don't mind that, because, like, I remember a lot of it, but a lot of it is also, like, like, blow by blue coming back to me by having the same character, by doing the same things, like, I know what to do next most times because it's just logically the next step for like what I'm doing. Like more so than like a super highly detailed planned action or something. It's just exactly what I would have done. <laughs> and it's really fun because like it's it's anymore. almost like I would say it's almost like subconscious at this point on this playthrough. Whereas every other playthrough where I haven't had a character that's like Stat like this with the crippled stats and stuff like that. It's like I'm already at the end advancement, and that's how I play through those all the way through, kind of thing. So it's interesting that it's kind of also curbing me towards, like almost instinctually, what I do in those scenarios. So yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun in the sense that like. I don't know, it's intuitive? I don't know, it's, it sounds like it's like really, I don't know, stupid in the sense, because like, I either should remember exactly how to do everything or I should have a plan or something, but it just, everything I've done with this character has felt right for her and for how I played her originally. And it makes me very happy because I'm like, it's nice to have like, everything kind of flowing the same way. There was a tome back there, I just realised. I will have to go back. That's probably where... Oh, hold on. There's a portal here. I... I missed a glacial trail portal? There's no way I missed a glacial trail portal. I... Wait, a ticket. Oh, yeah, I got the crystalline passage. Hey, I haven't got that yet. Wait, did I bypass a quest? No. Okay, that's fine. Um, just like, I feel a bit weird about like seeing that light up the way it does. Um, yeah, I'll go down and get this corner, then I'll go up to where the book is, and I guess we'll go down to next level. And it's a little bit confused to see a little book over here. And it's really hard to see. But yeah, I'll go and I'll. I'm guessing that's where What's His Face is that I have to activate, and he's not actually there, I think. And I have to like keep going, which reminds me a lot of like Dark Boy 4 they did something similar with that, with the um you know the first necromancer and everything, and he's just like, I'm not actually here and you have to kill me like so many times and stuff. 
Oh yeah. Nice. Um, I kind of feel like it's that again, which is probably why I didn't mind that, because it's probably like a repeat of this, like very a little bit. Look at that. East Evil Urns, let me put that there. Ooh! Champion Race is fine. I love their noises, I really do. They just seem disgruntled, and I like that. I like the disgruntled little, like, demon thing. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Like, I know what it's called, I just, like, I feel like it has a better, better way of expressing it. It's like, little, like, I was gonna call it fuzzy, honestly. It's more like spiny, but yeah. Same difference, basically. <laughs> Two more levels. Alright, how are we flowing for this? Lives. There we go. We've got two more. Two more levels. We'll be back over in here. Nice. Alright, I think I've got I've got almost all of this except for just up past the waypoint. And I'll run through that and get my ass back up to that book. I completely missed that. I'm wondering if it if I found that before. I don't know if that's actually a book, but normally it doesn't show a detail like that on the map unless it's something clickable. So where is it? It's along here. That just looks like an urn to me. Yeah, that's really weird. Maybe... Maybe this is one of those like weird like puzzle things or something. Like, you know, like the hidden walls or something. Because like, I wish I could zoom in on my mini-map. I can't. But that's, that's really weird because I don't see it show any other shrines. At all. Um, like if that was a shrine, for instance, maybe. Oh, hydrate, Bubba. Thank you. How are you doing this morning? Let me grab my water. Hold on. I could definitely do with some of that water. Now we'll stretch too. I'll stretch just before I go down here because I don't want to get attacked once I walk in. But this will be holes of pain. Oh, my neck. It's like the back of my shoulders keep stretching my neck. I can't remember how big this place is. Ah, oh. hey, what are you up to, Bubba? What's, uh, what's on your morning's agenda? I've got, uh, basically after stream tonight, I'm kind of like going to bed. But I've got to do a couple of things that I've got to go back to bed. Because, um, I've got an aircon installed tomorrow. So I'm not streaming tomorrow or Friday. So, you know, Friday is my partner's birthday, so I'm not streaming because, like, it's his birthday. Oh, shit. I was supposed to go, well, crap. I was supposed to go out to dinner on the weekend. That'll be interesting. I think we're going to carry anymore. A Korean barbecue. And initially, it was going to be a Japanese, uh, like, I don't know how you call it. I don't know how to describe it specifically, but it was like a Japanese restaurant that had I am overburdened. like steak. I don't know. It was like a Japanese like steak specialty place thing. I don't know. It's changed like a few times so far. It was supposed to be like potentially like a steakhouse thing. Good day. Um, then to like a smokehouse like you know like one of those Good like afternoon. traditional barbecue kind of like cook up things and then it was supposed to be the Japanese one steaks now it's a Korean barbecue it's uh the plans for this weekend have been like morphing all over the fucking place but I'm not mad I, I like either or and since I've been able to like like tentatively be able to eat like some meats without getting sick and stuff I'm kind of like looking forward to potentially being able to like maybe taste test some shit, you know? Might be fun. Plus like Korean barbecues always have like a fuck ton of like sides to like good shit. Like you know some great kimchi and like some like bean salad shit and fuck knows what else. <laughs> but I just, I just like it. The funny thing is like it's all stuff I eat and it's not stuff that Nick eats so I don't really understand why he wants to go there for his birthday. You know? But, like, I'm not mad. It's like, I'm happy with, like, whatever. 
Atlas, usually, because, like, you. the way that my Crohn's has worked for ages, right? Oh god, I have so much. Um, the way that my Crohn's has worked is because I haven't been able to eat most, like, regular meat for, like, most of a decade at this point. Um, normally when I go to, like, a place that has meat, I normally find whatever, like, the one or two, like, vegetarian, vegan meals and stuff like that are available that I could, like, safely eat. I usually, in restaurants, tend to go for, like, more vegan meals because they have a higher standard of preparing it without contamination. So that's been safer for me over the long run. But, um, Jesus, I, like, barely missed any of that first shot. But, uh, yeah, I normally would get tabuki, I think it's called, from, like, a Korean barbecue kind of place. It's, like, uh, rice cakes in, like, uh, gochujin like spicy chili paste sauce kind of thing with uh, like a heap of melted cheese on top. It's nothing special but it's like it's just good tasty food if you can get like a cheapish like alcoholic drink to kind of pair with it. It goes really well with like the cheaper shit kind of thing because it's, it's like um, I would call it like a beer food kind of thing. Not beer specifically but it's a drinking food for sure. Like, it's one of those ones where it just gets better okay. if you can have a drink with it, you know? So, yeah. I don't know. I kind of still want to just eat that. <laughs> this is the funniest thing. It's like, I have the choice now that I can potentially, if I'm feeling well enough on the weekend, I can potentially try some kind of, like, meat-ish dish with less uh. risk of getting, like, violently sick. Or like a, a low risk of being like unwell later Hello. kind of thing which is nice right but like I kind of also like the shit that I've grown to like from like not being able to just eat whatever and you know like anytime you go to like a restaurant where you know you like this the food and stuff like that right like I don't know about you guys but I'm one of those people that like order the same shit from the restaurant like I go there and I make my I make my first initial assumption of what I would like to eat from that restaurant and that is the thing that I only ever eat from that restaurant for the rest of the like time I ever buy from it. <laughs> I never get to like try like other menu items and stuff like that because I'm like once I find something I like, like unless it's shit the first time then I normally give something else a go next time but generally speaking I'm like if I find a, a winning item on the first go I don't want nothing else. Um, very rarely I'll try something else, but then you have that small dissatisfaction, or at least I do, with I've eaten something, but it wasn't the thing I went there and usually get, so I left like a little bit unsatisfied with the fact that I'm not, I didn't get to eat the thing that I would normally have, and so like, I don't know if like my brain had an expectation or I something, can't carry anymore. but yeah. It, uh, it's one of those like lets you down later kind of like situations but um, yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm pretty much gonna just like wait to see how I'm feeling because like if I'm still kind of like touch and go a bit unwell <clears throat> like just <coughs> sorry um, my voice is like fucking finally catching up being like overused so if I'm not super well like if I've still got like an upset stomach or I'm stressed about Rimworld I probably won't taste test anything to like try it like what I mean by taste test is like take a fucking nibble and like see how that goes kind of thing or take a very small bite or something just to like see how it like carries out but um yeah if I'm well enough maybe I'll try like, I'm probably not going to sit down and maybe order myself, like, a specific meat dish. I don't know. Depends how adventurous I feel. I can just imagine no. this, like, being, like, no fucks given. Just go ahead and just, like, try Wagyu or something like that, if they have it, and just be, like... Like, I'm talking about, like, the smallest, tiniest fucking cut available I could probably get my hands on. That, um, doesn't cost a house to be able to try, you know? But, um, yeah, I could just imagine, like, getting to try, like, a piece like that and then just being like, I don't care if I'm sick later. It's like, if it was, if it would be worth